Good afternoon, Matthew. Stephen Roman here, President and uh, CEO of Global Atomic Corporation. Good to be back with you. Uh, good to see you. I mean, it wasn't so long ago we saw you in, in London, um, but a lot's happened since then in the market. Uh, the usual flurry of geopolitical excitement, um, but I'm interested in the DASA project and how things are advancing. Um, saw the raise. Must be pleased about that in a market like this. You know what, Matthew? Um, we had tremendous support on the raise. Uh, and, uh, of course, we needed to do that uh, in order to couple couple reasons. One, to keep things on schedule and keep uh, keep all the work moving forward. But also, there is a requirement uh, as the banks come in that we spend 40% of the equity component. And I would say with this last raise, we're getting pretty close to that amount. So there is, and people need to realize, a requirement to spend that much money on our own prior to drawing down any kind of bank debt. Right. So, you know, it was very timely. I think uh, WNA was, was great. We had lots of very positive meetings there. We had huge institutional support on our raise last week. Uh, and, uh, and as a matter of fact, a lot of retail support as well. So, you know, the markets, of course, have, have come down with Global Atomic because of the Niger geopolitical situation. Uh, and clearly, we would obviously like to uh, raise at higher prices, but it is what it is. And we have to keep the project moving forward. And uh, it's just really heartening to see that kind of support for the company and the management and the project. So uh, things are going very well there. Yeah, okay. And, and so you make an interesting point there. It, it's the kind of case of like, okay, you don't want to be raising it at, at the, these levels for sure, but the markets are what the markets are. It, what, how, damaging, how damaging is it if you didn't raise and you weren't seen to be spending the 40% equity levels? Um, if yeah, I mean, th I think that's a simple question. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Well, listen, if if you didn't have the money and you weren't going ahead, you'd have to put the project on care and maintenance. So we don't want to do that. Clearly, uh, we've got uh, uh, contracts uh, that are kicking off in 2026. We want to start delivering into those contracts, uh, prove ourselves in the market as a reliable producer. And so uh, we are on schedule to start producing in Q1 of 2026. And I think that's basically on schedule. Uh, and uh, that's the timeline we've been giving people that are interested. We met quite a few additional uh, utilities at the WNA. And of course, everybody's still keen to contract with us. And we've been... Uh, working on a couple of RFPs from utilities uh, as we speak. Right, okay. And I'm not going to get into the debt situation because you, that's a process you're going through at the moment and there's very little that you could you could tell me, give me mid-discussions, mid, mid right? Um, but I'm going to talk about um, the what exactly you are doing on the ground with the, with the equity component because there's a lot of companies out there talking a good game but actually not moving forward. You've started operations on the ground where where are you what, what's been built and you know in percentage terms where would you say you are in terms of um you know to, in terms of proximity to um, production i would say the mine we are already bringing up ore so we we don't want to bring up a lot of ore right now because we don't want it sitting on surface but as part of our underground development we will be going through some ore as we do uh level development uh, prior to doing stoping. So that level development ore, uh, it's very good grade. Uh, we're bringing it to surface. It's sitting there uh, in uh, small quantities at this point in time. We want to keep it that way. But really, the mine has progressed very well. We just, since we met you last uh, a few weeks ago, we've now uh, completed our first big five meter diameter vent rays and so now the rig has moved on to the second location. So that's this this first raise is for fresh air going down. The next one's for exhaust air coming up. So that this is a huge, uh, let's say, infrastructure project. We've got the fans on surface right now. So they will be. We're just fabricating the the base plate to mount the fans on. So that once we have those fans running, we'll be able to just go gangbusters underground and open up five levels. 
Right now we've got the first level basically open. We're working on the second level. And of course, we've got to catch up with getting this ventilation system in place. And then we're, we're good to go and uh, open up uh, five levels and start stoping. So I would say the mine is, I, you know, from my point of view, 75% there. Uh, the mill, on the other hand, uh, I would say is probably 30% to 35% there. We've got uh, all the earthworks happening now, and the civils are going to start to uh, pour cement for two different areas right now. Uh, one is the huge camp expansion. So the entire camp now, uh, 250 men units, uh, they've arrived uh, and they're on site. So we have to pour the bases for those and start fabricating that. That's going to be underway and that camp should be fully operational by the end of the year. Uh, we've got another stick built camp that we are using all local contractors to build. That one's almost completed. That's a 60-man facility. And then we've got about 400 people in the existing uh, Daji camp there right now. So the camp work, I would say, you know, you're looking again around 70, 75% complete there. Um, and uh, as soon as we start uh, with the civils uh, at the area of the acid plant, uh, which right now we've completed the earthworks there. Uh, we've now uh, been shipping the acid plant components from India to site. So they are now arriving at the dry port of Kano in northern Nigeria. There's a, another, it's basically a straight shot from there to Agadez and then to Dasa. So that's, that's already happening. Uh, we just, uh, in the last week, uh, got confirmation with photos of our, our big sag mill, the semi autogenous grinding uh, mill that's been fabricated in uh, South Africa. That's now being shipped to site. So you can see it's basically uh, we do the earthworks, we get the, the concrete work done, and then we start installing the components, which are all being either... Uh, in the fabrication process or complete already that are being shipped. So the, the mill overall, 30, 35% done at this point in time. Right. I, I guess we're past the point where this feels like a, a, a mining camp, but it, it definitely is a mining camp at the moment. Um, oh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, for, for, for sure. And, and I want to I want to talk about this because it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question, but it's like it in the context of what's going on in West Africa, we saw obviously Burkina Faso talking about nationalizing mines because it wasn't seeing people move quickly enough. And, and you know, some companies have been very quick to point out, look, if, if, you, if you're working and doing things in country, the government's got no problem with it. It's about the people who are, you know, um, land grabbing and then not doing too much. For, for you and your relationship with the Niger government, seeing what you're doing on the ground, does that give them confidence that you're going to deliver, you are going to deliver jobs, revenue, taxes, all of those things that they want to see? Well, I, I would say the, the, the biggest proof of that, uh, Matthew, is that we, got, we, we received a letter from the president and he copied all of his ministers and he said, this is a strategic project. It's of national importance. We're 100 percent behind it. And you guys all get behind this project and help uh, Global Atomic and Somita wherever they need it. So you know what? Um, you can't ask for more than that. And uh, everybody's pushing and in the same direction. And what's that done for, and I remember this conversation from, I think it was maybe 18 months ago, where you kind of have NGOs active in country uh, trying to make things difficult. Um, are they getting short shrift at the moment? <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that because last week uh, we had, I think it's the final uh, hearing in the courts with uh, the, the local uh, shit disturber NGO and uh, I, I think it's it's a dead issue now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Look, um, we can bleep that out. The, 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 no, no, that's staying in. <laughs> that's staying in. That's good. And we're, we, well, you know that that you know, and we see this all around, all the way around the world. Where you know um, these NGOs do kind of try and 
stir up and co- cause issues. But if you're getting on and doing things the right way with, with the approval of the listen, government, Matthew, these we, things get we, done. We work with NGOs in the country. We bring them to site. We have lots of good relations with NGOs. There's some that are clearly there just Fair to point. disrupt the project. And as a matter of fact, this same NGO was after both the government and us. And just with this trumped up nonsense, and, you know, eventually uh, they, they went through the whole process, went through all the court hearings, went through appeals court, went through all this. But I, I think it's done. OK, well, it's good to hear. Good to hear. Um, OK, well, look, th- things happening on the ground. Um, we will. And you're clear about the date. You're not changing that date in terms of first poor. Yeah. Uh, Q126 is when we're going to be starting to fill drums with yellow cake. OK. There we go. So that's that's where we're looking to hear. Um, I want to talk about what you're doing in the context of the macro at the moment, because I, this is meant to be like a quick meeting, so I apologize for going on a bit, but it's always good to have no you problem. on. Um, is, as I said earlier, there's a lot of people kind of claiming that they're going to be in production, getting into production, thinking about getting to production, in Cameco, thinking about uh, getting into, into production. Um, there's very few actually in the process of building right now. I think that will have you know, consequences further down the line in terms of supply. It's got to be good news for you there, hasn't it? Well, it's very good news for us. And I mean, that's what I said at the beginning is this, we get, we're getting tremendous market support, institutional support, shareholder support. I think everybody realizes now uh, that this is a, a very real project. We have backing from the Niger government and uh, all the ministers to help us through this thing. We've got a, a fully integrated uh, mining team. Uh, this is this is something that again a lot of people may not think about, but uh, to put an entire team together from scratch and have everybody from top level all the way down, and have these mentorship programs, training programs, uh, university programs at Niger training people, we're doing we're doing the full gambit from soup to nuts here. And uh, it's it's not just you know a few guys building a small project here. This is a this is a mega project in Niger. Right, and I know they appreciate. It, but uh, coming coming back selfishly, um, thinking with investors hat on is what does it mean if others don't get into production the same? I mean, do you, your conversations with utilities lead you to believe they they believe the supply numbers being put out, or are they a bit more astute than that? Um, and what's that mean for negotiations with you for someone who can deliver? Well, you know what? I think um, fuel buyers typically um, think that there's going to be lots of supply. Um, I think they've come around a little bit. Um, I think with uh, more announcements like Google announcing they're going to have 500 megawatts of small modular reactor power, and uh, Gates with his Terra Power and all these different groups that are now coming into the market, uh, the, the supply is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And, and there's just not a lot of supply out there. You've got disruptions in Kazakhstan as well. You've got shipping issues. Um, you know, you've got Mr. Putin threatening that he's going to cut off certain supplies for various things. So the the market really is heading to a point where there's got to be a big upward correction in the price. I think right now we're sort of bumping along here at 80 plus dollars a a pound, which is a great price, mind you. But I I think that uh, the, the future looks extremely bright for nuclear and for the uranium business. So in terms of when you do sit down and talk about term contracts. You must have one eye to the future in terms of the way you want to structure these things in terms of the the, the cap on the yeah, caps on these things. Yeah, we really structure in a blended formula, uh, formula with uh, using uh, a base price based on spot market and the term price and then uh, a component of, of upward uh, pricing in there. And of course, we give utilities the option on certain things 
so that they can either have some of this or some of that. But effectively, it, it keeps us in the market as the prices are increasing. We get some benefit of that increased price. And as we contract with new utilities, of course, you're using a, a higher base level. So as you uh, move forward with your production and you start ramping up your production, the idea is to uh, layer in contracts so that you have a, a good solid book and uh, it's a, a blended price that's taking advantage of higher pricing. Yeah, I think it's interesting times out there in terms of how people are kind of costing this and, and, and valuing the these projects. Um, you know, the cost of money going forward is only going to get more expensive um, and I'm just looking forward to sort of seeing how these first movers take advantage of the situation certainly in terms of the contracting um, what, can I just ask with regards to some of the other conversations that you may be having out there and I'm, obviously I'm not going towards the debt conversation but more about um, financiers more broadly their understanding of the uranium market is, is it there yet are we, are we still talking to uranium specific funds uh, do bankers, are they leaning in? Because we've, we've seen a few more analysts show up in, from some of the big banks, which and they haven't been analysts on uranium, I don't know, since 2011. So, you know, they've got a lot to learn. Do, have, have, they, have they kind of gone up the learning curve quickly? Well, uh, not quick enough, I would say. I think, uh, you know, just recently uh, uh, quite a, a pack of, of big bankers have decided they're going to back nuclear uh, that really hasn't, sh you know, reflected itself in the market yet, I would say. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for that to happen. And I think uh, once uranium starts moving through $100 again, you're going to get more uh, speed turned on with the analysts. Um, I, th I think it's still a, a fairly small group of funds that are supporting the industry. And they got in a little bit early and they've been riding it in and out, uh, making money along the way. Um, but, uh, you know, it just it reflects in our last raise how many came in on, on that one. And, you know, they just see that, uh, you know, we're at a, at a very low NAV right now. I think we're trading at 0.2 or 0.25 NAV, and most of our peer groups at 0 0.75, 0 0.8. So, I mean, we've just been slammed because of what's happened in Niger. But, you know, I think I think the broader scope of funds aren't there yet. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of interesting um, at the moment. I think people are, are talking a good nuclear game. The banks are talking, are talking a good nuclear game. I think at some point there'll be big capex projects, which they expect to fund. And then I think uranium is seen as a derivative, derivative of nuclear, and, that, and that's maybe where that will kind of trickle down. Um, so, well, you can't have nuclear without uranium. A, a, amen. But I think bankers view it differently. They're looking at immediate fees. Uh, so it's, um, they, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how quickly that trickles down. I suspect it'll be very, very quickly once they work out it is the feedstock for uh, the things that they're building, which will be otherwise white elephants. Um, look, Stephen, look, I'm going to let you go because um, I know you've, you've got a busy busy week and uh, lots, of, lots of chats, conversations going on. Appreciate you coming on and giving us an update. Glad things are going well on the ground. We'll see you soon. Yeah, Matthew, it's always a pleasure and uh, look forward to the next chat.